You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, never here for Drake Wing Gaming. It's something about Twitter, the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Sissel's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up and let's go. October 15th. There we go. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. The timer eventually ticked down to zero and the tournament host blew his horn with a shrill wail. And that's time! Put down your spatulas and get ready to present your creations. I'm sure our esteemed judges are excited to taste what you have in store. Most of the almond flower victims grimaced and nervously shuffled their dishes on the viewing table. Many of them looked half looked half finished, with some shoved together in a last minute panic. To the surprise of no one, the foppish contestant and the rich one were brimming with smugness as they put their cupcakes on display. Very good, very good. It seems at least some of our contenders are brimming with confidence. Hmm? Where is contestant Cecil Bradley? Come on, time's up. Put down your utensils and come show us what you've got. Cecil's long ears poked out from underneath his table. I'm coming, give me a damn moment. I spilled chocolate over the flower here. My heart plummeted slightly as I watched Cecil march up to the front of the stage with his tray. His tray looked rather spacious compared to the rest. It seemed he only managed to make ten of the twelve required cupcakes. He should still be fine, right? He might take a hit in the execution category, but as long as he aced everything else... Cecil plopped his tray under the judging table with his head stubbornly held high. Everyone's back straightened as Judge Bartholomew stood up and approached, his gaze stern as he scanned through the various entries. He did not look impressed, but honestly it was hard to tell underneath that bushy beard of his. Let the judging... <clears throat> Let the judging commence. The next few minutes passed in a painful pattern. Judge Bartholomew, followed by a small flock of other judges, casually stepped up to each entry with a sharp glare much to the terror of the contestants. He'd give their creations a dismissive once over before scooping their cupcake in, in half with a fork. One bite, one disappointed shake of the head, and then he'd move on to the next one. Occasionally, he'd remark a word or two. Pedestrian, rather dry, isn't it? And woefully inadequate were among the few phrases he uttered. He used to say he left a trail of broken spirits and shattered self-esteem in his wake. Finally, there were only three contestants left. The rich guy, that foppish asshole, and Sissel. All three did their best to look unfazed, but nervously shuffled in place as Judge Bartholomew, Judge Bartholomew approached. Ooh, wow, those are fancy looking. He first approached the rich contestant's cupcakes with a raised brow. Interesting presentation. Why don't you explain your thought process to us, young man? I'm interested to see how your entry pertains to this year's theme. The rich contestant beamed with a smug grin. Why, certainly. I'd be, ha I'd be happy to share. My cup, my cakes are decorated with the finest 24 karat gold foil, along with a spattering of silver and edible diamonds. The rest of the ingredients are the best that money can buy, and are sure to dazzle your taste buds. I see. The judge sounded bored as he forked at the golden cupcakes to examine their insides. Love is expressed. In <clears throat> love is expressed in a wide array of ways, but none is as universal as mankind's love for wealth. Why, since time immemorial, we've gifted our partners with diamonds and precious metals as a show of our love. What better way to honor this theme than to do the very same with my creations? Your entry is certainly a glamorous display of wealth, no doubt about that. Judge Bartholomew nibbled, nibbled at his fork for a few moments before setting it down and moved on wordlessly to the next entry. Oh, those are actually pretty cool looking. The foppish contestant gripped the hem of his uniform nervously as the judge stared down at his creation. And you, young man... What is the idea behind your entry? Well, you see, seeing as the theme is love, I naturally decided to create a cupcake that is tailor-made to the person I myself love. Ah, an entry with a personal touch. Let's see how your efforts paid off. The judge forked ha off half a cupcake and popped it in his mouth, chewing it lowly. His eyes widened, slightly intrigued as he slowly allowed the flavors to wash over him. Mint as the base of your cake, sprinkling of pecans on top, with a dash of raspberry in the cream. I'm rather fond of those flavors. I'm glad you like it, sir. And is that a hint of ginger I taste in the cream as well? My wife is particularly fond of that trick. Gives the whole, makes the whole flavor profile quite a subtle punch. The judge set down his fork. It was hard to tell if he was impressed or not behind his unre unreadably stern face, but he spent several moments staring down at the sentry, almost deep in thought. This is a very well-made cake, young man. For whom did you dedicate it to? For my girlfriend back at home, sir. Well, I do hope she appreciates your efforts. With that, the judge moved on. Cecil looked rather distracted as Bartholomew approached him, his gaze nervously darting back to his own workstation. 
Bradley, are you with us? Huh? Oh, yeah, what's up? Hmm. Ooh. Seems you've missed the mark on the 12 cupcake quota. Oh, um, I kind of didn't have enough ingredients to make full 12 cupcake serving, sorry. Hmm. The judge stared down at Sissel's entry for several long moments before letting out a low grumble. That is certainly a lot of chocolate. Quite cliched for a love-themed cupcake, don't you think? You got a problem with it? Perhaps. I've personally never been fond of chocolate. Sissel spluttered in disbelief. What kind of culinary person doesn't like chocolate? The kind who's worked in the field for 40 long years, young man. I simply believe it's a rather overrated ingredient is all. Sissel puffed out his chest indignantly. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that one of the tournament criteria was make something specifically for an old fossil. The theme is love, isn't it? So I wanted to make something that th that twat over there would enjoy. So yeah, there's chocolate in my cake. Seven different varieties, in fact. You gonna take points off for that? Bartholomew followed Sissel's gesturing hands and his eyes locked onto me in the crowd. and gave the judge a half-hearted wave. And that twat would be... My dumb boyfriend! He's the one of the only reasons I made it this far, and he's also a bit of a chocoholic. So I, uh... Sissel's face flushed slightly pink. I wanted to de dedicate this entry to him, because he's really sweet and he makes me happy. It's as simple as that. For the first time since the beginning of the tournament, Judge Bartholomew's lips jerked with a hint of a smile. <laughs> I see. He picked up a fork and reached down to scoop out the cupcake, but paused curiously. It gently prodded at the cupcake petals wrapped around the base. The petals fluttered at his touch, as thin as paper. Interesting. Ooh. The judge finally scooped the cupcake in half. A cascade of hot liquid chocolate immediately poured out from the center and spilled onto the plate. Bartholomew's eyes widened and he quickly moved to pop the dripping forkful of cake into his mouth. Hmm. It's rather bitter, don't you think? The judge blinked. He stood for several moments, rolling the cake in his mouth as he slowly absorbed the flavors. Then he reached down to scoop another forkful. Explain to me your thought process, Bradley. Why the bitter outer shell? It's a rather unflattering first impression of the flavor profile, don't you think? Sissel scratched his head, suddenly a little shy. Well, um, love is complicated sometimes, you know. The judge scooped another forkful of cake and patiently motioned for him to continue. He's just eating the damn thing! It, it can be tough to accept sometimes. And sometimes it can taste like bitter medicine because you don't feel like you deserve it when it's freely given. But once you work past that and allow yourself to really feel it without any guilt, it can be the sweetest thing in the world. If you just give it a chance, it can wash all the bitterness away. Cecil glanced in my direction and looked, and looked utterly aghast at the sweet, besotted grin on my face. His cheeks immediately flushed red and he glared stubbornly at the floor. Judge Bartholomew finished his cupcake in silence before finally setting down his fork. The different layers of chocolate work very well together. I can see you put a lot of effort to ensure they all melt effortlessly on the tongue into one coherent flavor. The savory tang of sweet potatoes was a nice touch as well. Your quick thinking avoided the dry and crusty texture that the almond flour would have otherwise inflicted. Well done, Bradley. My name is Sissel, dude. The judge blinked in surprise. His lips twitched with the ghost of a smile. Very well, Sissel. He turned towards the crowd and the host with a nod. The rest of the judges and I will reconvene to tally the numbers. You will have your winners shortly. It would be an understatement to say that the weight was nerve-wracking. I mean, that judge literally ate, like, most of the cupcake. I think Sissel's going to win. I gripped the edge of my seat so tightly that my knuckles turned white, every minute passing by like a century. All contestants on the stage shuffled about anxiously as the judges whispered quietly amongst themselves. Sissel, in contrast, looked rather distracted. He kept glancing back at his own workstation and thumping his foot restlessly. Was he worried about how he didn't meet the 12 cupcake, the 12 cake criteria? The old judge seemed kind of impressed with everything else about his cake, so maybe that would make up for it. Oh, what's this? It seems our judges have finally reached a conclusion. The lights in the stadium dimmed as everyone leaned forward in their seats. The host ran across the stage and snatched a small envelope of note cards from the judge's table. He shuffled through them furiously. And what a cutthroat year it is, folks! It seems the majority of our contestants were not able to breach the 25-point mark. Our judge's attention is honed in on three contestants of note. 
In third place with a total of 38 points, Pat Vicelli. Vicelli. Probably Vicelli. Huh, it just occurred to me that I didn't pay any attention when the other contestants were introduced. So that's what the rich dude's name was. Philip was right. It was kind of hard to take anyone seriously when they're named after bread. The previously smug rich contestant's jaws dropped in under indignation. He rushed towards the host furiously and grabbed him by the collar. What? The third place? This is ridiculous. There must be some sort of mistake. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. Sit down, kid. The judges will be explaining their reasoning after the announcements. Oh, they better have an explanation or my father will be hearing about this. At that moment, an iced coffee sailed across the air and splashed across the rich contestant's head with remarkable accuracy. Uh, the rich contestant gaped as he stood dripping in the middle of the stadium, cold and drenched. Boo! Get off the stage! I thought you said you were only getting water! Jenny shrugged and grinned. They were selling coffee during the intermission. The, cu the, cups, uh, the cups make the for more dramatic projectiles and bottled water. Huh, I think the tournament security is coming after you. Heh, <laughs> they'll have to catch me first. With that, Jenny ducked between Owen, Owen and Herschel's broad shoulders before slowly crab-walking her way through the crowd's feet. Back on stage, the host cleared his throat loudly before glancing at his notes. Anyway, where were we? Oh yes, your second place winner with a total of 43 points is... Macaron! The foppish contestant went rigid for a moment before bowing to the cheering crowd through gritted teeth. Maybe he just hit him how stupid his name sounded when read out loud. As he hung his head low, he shot a deathly bitter glare towards Sissel. Sissel, on the other hand, didn't seem to be paying any attention to the host's announcements and was still glancing back at his workstation with a furrowed brow. And now, for our first place winner and this year's champion with a total of 44 points, I present to you, Sissel Bradley! It took a solid minute of the crowd erupting in shrieks and applause and our screams of triumph and waving before Sissel registered it was all for him. He blinked, ears twitching, as the host suddenly shoved his microphone into his face. Huh? Uh, I won? This is outrageous! How in the world did this guy score more than the rest of us? There must have been a mistake. I demand a recount! The foppish contestant kept his cool a little better, but he was gritting his teeth so hard that he was surprised they didn't crack under the pressure. I, too, am curious to hear the judges' reasoning behind their rulings. The results are a little confusing, to say the least. Judge Bartholomew looked unperturbed by the two contestants' bitter scowls as he strolled towards the center stage and gingerly plucked the host's microphone from his, from his grasp. I will be happy to explain. What confuses you so about our ruling? The rich contestant was quick to shove his way forward. I, for one, am shocked by your utter lack of taste. My entry was clearly made with superior ingredients and is made with the best money could buy. There's no way in hell I'd lose to these things. The rich asshole was practically spitting as he gestured towards other contestants' entries dismissively. Judge Bartholomew looked utterly bored. Your cupcakes do look excellent, yes, and received nearly full marks in the presentation category. But that was all it had going for it. Excuse me? The ingredients you used were indeed excellent, but they were used haphazardly with no sense of direction or harmony. When I tried your cupcake, I could indeed taste the richness of its ingredients, but not once could I taste the expertise of its creator. The century is perhaps the textbook example of the adage, money cannot buy talent. Not to mention wealth is mankind's universal love is the most trite and uninspired answer to a tournament theme I've ever I've heard in years. Are the poor and less fortunate undeserving of love? Is a person's worth only measured by their wealth and success? I don't think so. The rich contestant promptly turned blue in the face and was escorted out of the arena while a torrent of filth poured from his mouth. The judge looked unfazed as he turned his attention towards the foppish contestant. Alright, and I'm going to pause it right there and we'll hear the rest of that in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you all, but above and beyond, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our three gold tier patrons, Zach, uh, Zeke, Toby, and Blue Wolf Alpha. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all, all of our Nightside 4 contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye